Greetings everyone, and welcome back to another video in the iWish series. A series in which I buy things off Wish to see if they're any good. Most of the time they're not, but hey, you never know. Now I had some troubles buying things off Wish in the last couple of months, but I finally fixed that and I've bought myself a few items off Wish that I showed off during the live stream. So there's going to be three iWish videos in a row. So I hope that you will be all prepared to see that. But before we get into looking at the item we're looking at today, I just want to let you know that I'm a little bit sick still. So if you can hear a bit of a nasally voice and stuff, it's because I'm still a little bit sick, but I'm okay. I'm okay. I can do this review. It's all good. Uh, the second thing is there is timestamps in the description as well as the pinned comment. So you can skip to wherever you need to be. If you want to watch the whole thing, that's great. If you want to watch just five minutes or something like that, that's absolutely fine. The reason why these videos go for so long is because I like to go in depth with my videos. And if you don't want to watch the whole thing, that's absolutely understandable. The next thing is that I buy these items off Wish so you do not have to. There are so many people that use Wish and fall for the false advertising that's listed on there and I buy these things for entertainment as well as to let people know don't buy these things off Wish. If you've seen something like this on Wish, stay away from it at all costs. So the first item that we are having a look at today, it's a pricey one but it was highly requested in my live stream. This is the 2021 new fashion 5G super smartphone My 11 Ultra with 16 gig plus 512 gig large memory unique triple card slot design. Now this does have a wonderful review score of one and a half stars with three reviews from this person here, which I don't know what this says. Uh, I'm sure they're happy with it anyways. But as you can see here, this is a My 11 Ultra. Hang on a second. That's not Xiaomi. That says Xiaomi right there. The cheeky little bastards have decided to put an L after the X to make it look like it says Xiaomi, but instead, that's a lowercase L, so it says Xiaomi. Now, if you're just browsing Wish, and you know of the brand Xiaomi, and you see this and go, oh, that's a very, very good price, and you're looking for a smartphone with really good specs, you're going to see this and go, hey, that's a great bargain, but uh, let me tell you, that's not a good bargain at all. Now, they do offer this in several configurations. They offer a 3 gig plus 32 gig version, which is on screen now, and that's $190 plus $16 shipping. You can then bump it up to 12 gigs of RAM plus 512 gigs of storage for $211 Australian, or you can go the one that I went with, which is the 16 gig plus 512 gig version for $222 Australian. I'll display the currency conversion chart right here for you all, just so you can get a rough idea of how much this thing costs. But we've definitely heard some weird names from Wish before, like the Samsung My Mate, but I think Shlaumi takes the cake. It just sort of rolls off the tongue. Shlaumi. So I think it's time that we now go over the wonderful listing for the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra. It says that it comes with a free 256 gig micro SD card. We will be testing this to see if it's a true 256 gig micro SD card, but I highly doubt it. The first picture just shows it there and you can see all the cameras on the back and also a secondary display. The actual Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra has a secondary display on the back for the purpose of using the rear cameras for a selfie, I suppose, and other shortcuts. But our our one on Wish appears to have it, so do we have dual displays on a welcome device? Only time will tell. But it's got a 32 megapixel front camera and a 64 megapixel rear camera, 16 gig RAM plus 512 gig storage, and it is a DECA core processor as always. It does have a 7 inch teardrop notch display, so it'd be interesting to see the resolution of that. The next picture just shows it next to a magazine in the various different colors. I can't remember what color I chose, but um, as you can see, all luxury. And going closer, you can see the three cameras, the flash, and the secondary display in this picture. See, Wish is trying to draw your attention to this by showing all these great features. And the next picture shows the front of the phone near the magazine with different wallpapers and it looks like it's got a curved screen in there like the real deal but we'll see there is also the my 11 ultra spec sheet with the 7 inch drop screen 32 plus 64 megapixel with people in an office looking pretty happy i think that's got a watermark that says it's stolen off xiaomi which doesn't surprise me that they've pinched that from xiaomi so anyways uh 16 gig plus 512 gig the mediatek mt6893 deca core wonderful we have face recognition and the 7200 milliamp hour large battery then we have the My 11 Ultra once again, with the specifications that we know, and once again shows the camera layout and the secondary display. What if that secondary display is actually legit? What if they put like a cheapo smartwatch LCD into the back of this thing? It would be the ultimate welcome phone, but I'm not holding my hopes up. Then we have the seven inch drop screen, like a drop of water on the screen. Each bright screen is, we've seen this before, except there's horses. So 
Yay. The 16 gig plus 512 gig flash memory, 16 gig big memory and 512 gig storage space ensuring smooth loading of screens, common game process resident in the background, quickly switch to other applications in seconds and are not afraid of being killed even if hung up for a long time. Uh, don't know what that picture is from, someone will tell me in the comments. Then we have our strong Deca Core processor, reshaping Android resource scheduling mechanism, greatly reducing the probability of... We've heard all this before, it snatches red packets faster as we all know, and it has 80% increased running speed. Well, I'm happy to know that it is running instead of walking. Then we have the new phase change thermal conductive material. For the first time, the solid liquid phase change thermal pad used in the base station was applied to the mobile phone. Compared with gel, the thermal conductivity is increased by 100% and there is a large area of VC thermal board to efficiently dissipate heat at any time. Who wants to guess that this thing doesn't exist in this phone whatsoever? I believe that this is a Xiaomi advertisement that they've just pulled right here and chucked their own new phase change thermal conductive material on here. Uh, someone will let me know in the comments as well. And then of course the zero photosensitive face recognition where you can just look at your phone with a dead stare and it will unlock for you. We'll test this as always. Fingerprint unlock, quickly unlock in 0.1 seconds. That's going to be fun to test as always. Oh, here we go. Yep, 32 megapixel front camera, and there's the watermark right there. So I have a strong feeling that majority of these pictures are pinched from Xiaomi's own advertising of the My 11 Ultra. Then we've got 64 million cameras with the Rubik's Cube technology. Look at this guy. He just doesn't really look happy holding it. He, I mean, he kind of does. Global 5G LTE bands. It's one or the other. It's 5G or it's LTE. Which one is it? The chip has lower power consumption, more than surpassing powerful computing power and surging performance from the beginning. It is one step faster. 5G connection, faster download speed, lower latency, and fast experience. So, once again, 5G. Who wants to guess that this thing is only going to be 3G? Feel free to debate amongst yourselves in the premiere. We've got the 7,200 milliamp hour big battery with the high capacity 7,200 milliamp hour battery and their 6px battery saving technology thing will make it last forever. Yeah, we'll see about that. We have the dual SIM plus SD card, which is the dual nano SIMs and micro SD card that goes in this. Then we have another advertisement showing that it's got dual 5G standby at the top, the free micro SD card, TikTok is installed by default, according to this. Uh, okay. Face ID, fingerprint, and then the last picture is pretty much what we've seen at the start. I don't think there's any differences from what I've seen. But anyways, down to the description, it does confirm that we have the free 256 gig micro SD card that is included with this. We have a lot of the specifications just here. I'm not going to read all this. I'm just going to leave it on screen for you to just uh, have a look at. But it's pretty much what we've all seen before for the most part, I think. We've got the factory direct sales as before with the specification sheet here claiming that we have a 1440p display. Android 11 supposedly. We've got the 2G bands and 3G bands listed, but no 4G or 5G as per usual. I'm not holding my hopes up as this being the first welcome device with 4G, that's for sure. Then we have the attention due to differences. If you receive something that's completely different to what we advertise, it's not our problem. And the package includes the smartphone, the charger adapter, the date cable. Fair enough then. Headphones use a manual phone case and a protection film. I think you all get a rough idea of what's going on with this, uh, Shlaumi My 11 Ultra, but I just wanted to quickly address something at the moment. This is something that I stumbled across on my live stream, and that is that some phones I wish now are claiming to have Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 processors in them. It doesn't say Snapdragon, but it says Qualcomm 888 processor, and this is, of course, not true whatsoever. So for the people out there that don't know and see Qualcomm 888 on a wish listing, you're not going to receive a phone that's got a Qualcomm 888 in it, that's for sure. Also, this phone is called the 10-core Terrasaur 888 processor mobile phone. We had a good laugh on stream about that. That was extremely funny to come across this listing. And in the actual listing itself, it says Qualcomm 888 just there. They've just deleted the MediaTek and replaced it with Qualcomm 888. So I'm just letting people out there know that this is what's currently going on with Wish at the moment. If you want me to purchase one of these phones that claims that it has a Qualcomm 888 processor in it, let me know and um, we'll see what happens. So is this $225 Australian Xiaomi My 11 Ultra phone going to have a secondary display, three rear cameras, a 1440p display? I highly doubt it, but let's get into the unboxing and have a look at this thing. Now, surprisingly, this only took 12 days to get from China to Australia, which is extremely good. Also, all the other items that I've purchased on Wish are in this same parcel. So the phone's in there, and I've bought two other items, which 
I'm not going to tell you what they are just yet. I don't want to spoil anything, but supposedly all of it is in here. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up and have a look at this uh, Schlaumi My 11 Ultra. I just, the name Schlaumi, man, just... Okay, sure, why not? Well, I'll go from here first, because I think I've just punctured the air bubble. That's all right. Okay. Now, I'm not looking at the other items that are in there. I'm going to put them down to the side. Actually, I can't look at them because they're both in parcels, so I don't know what they look like. So I can't spoil anything just yet. But here is the phone in another package. So it's package section, I guess. Anyways, opening this up reveals... Oh, dear. Good sign already. Yep. Smartphone. I believe I just cut my finger open just then. Yep, I did. Uh, whoops. This has already injured me already, so uh, we're doing well. Here it is, the smartphone, just in a generic white box with our bronze Android logo guy on there. This is a completely legit phone for sure. Nothing on the sides, nothing at all. It's just smartphone, okay. Well, we'll just open smartphone, and we have smartphone just there, which we're going to put there. Oh, a bit light. Opening this, we get our accessories, which includes a free case, which is always lovely. Our free... You bastards. 128 gig. Oh, come on, man. They said 256 gig in the listing. Well, that's not fair. Anyone want to guess what this is going to be? Also, they've included something else in here. I can't get into this. There we go. That's easier. They've gave me a, uh, uh, what are they called? Pop sockets, I think they're called. So we can stick a, a kibby on the back of the phone if we wanted to. That's kind of nice though. That's probably more useful than this. It's probably going to be eight gig, maybe 16 gig, but we'll try it. We'll try it. We have a, a service guarantee card. Enjoy the warranty service with this card. Please keep properly this card. When you open the package, we hope you could feel our sincerity and dedication. There may be some unexpected reasons that caused your distress or discomfort. Yeah, it's called buying off wish. We apologize for this. No problems, you're forgiven. If you have any questions, please contact us in time. We will give you a most satisfactory answer as soon as possible. Thank you again for your trust and support. This is the first time I've ever seen a warranty card within one of these phones, I think. Maybe I've seen it in another one. I've reviewed so many, I have no idea. We get some free headphones, which look like the absolute bog stand ones as we're used to. Do we get a type C or micro USB? It is type C. That's interesting. Now we have the charger here that weighs absolutely nothing whatsoever. We'll just go in for a bit of a zoom there and have a look at the claimed specifications of it all. And I would not trust plugging this thing into power, that is for certain. Uh, just stomping on it here like so, to get a good look at the inside and oh dear god, okay, oh, okay. If someone wants to tell me that this is quality, feel free. I think I actually, yeah, I completely broke it while stomping on it. Uh, that's fine. I'll just pretend that was already fact. That's factory. Yeah, it's factory. We get a quick start guide which says the SIM card and T-Flash card are portable. Pay attention to these small things to avoid children eating them. Okay, fair enough then. Uh, all the usual stuff there, I guess. There might be something funny on there, but we're delaying the inevitable. We have the SIM eject tool and as well as the free tempered glass screen protector. There's probably a plastic one already applied, but you get a glass one just in case. I'll just put the parts in there like so. That's completely fine. The case looks a little something like this. It might actually fit the real My 11 Ultra. Maybe, it's got a bit of a din in there. That's okay. Here's the phone itself, the main event. All right, here we go. Here we go, oh boy. Ooh, not expecting much, but oh god. Okay, so uh, the bezel size right there. <laughs> that's uh, that's extremely good. Okay, uh, we'll just take the screen protector off like so. Yeah, that's uh, that's a big chin right there. Holy moly. We've got our front camera just there as well as our earpiece and our teardrop notch as per usual. But you can see all the bezels and all that sort of thing. We have some tape along the power button to stop it from switching on during transit, which is kind of cool. But let's have a look at the back of the phone. Here we go. 
Oh, you got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> oh, the, it's, it's just a fucking sticker. Oh, come on. It's just a sticker. Oh, man, come on. And they've put... They've actually put a film... Oh, boy. Oh, that's that's the best welcome feature ever. I was hoping it would be an actual LCD, but no, it's not. It's a sticker. Anyways, we have the dual IME eyes there. Uh, the warm prompt saying that if the phone heats up, uh, just fine, let it spontaneously combust. That's completely acceptable for this. Our actual legit camera is just there with our fake ones there and there. The 120 times is all bullshit as per usual. And then having a look around the phone, we have our SIM tray just there. And then at the bottom, we have dual speaker grills and our USB type C port and a microphone hole. Then we have the power button as well as the volume rockers. And I chose blue and this has a headphone jack as well. I didn't realize that. There you go, has a headphone jack. I should have known because it comes with uh, headphones, but there you go. We've got a headphone jack. We've got a sticker on the back. Everything is going according to plan. I love it. In regards to the build quality, it does feel pretty plastic and I can push on the back cover there and feel that there's a bit of a gap going on in there. But it definitely doesn't have a curved screen and this scratch here came out of nowhere. Unless it was there and I just didn't see it before, but uh, there you go. The back is slightly curved, but as I said, the front's got nothing, it's just flat. So the back is made of glass, the camera bump is made of plastic, the frame is made of plastic, and the front is glass. Taking out the SIM card tray, there we go, we've got our triple slot design just there. I'm going to load this up with a Telstra SIM and a 16 gig micro SD card. Load them into the phone like so. Clean the screen. And let's go ahead and power up the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra. What's it going to say? Nothing different. What's it going to play? What sound is it going to play? Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. <sighs> That's good to hear. Android starting. Do we have setup? No, surely we don't have a setup on a welcome device. That could. No, no. Unless it's just lagging along. Uh, we have 5G. The glorious 5G is displayed at the top with no reception. Oh, there we go. There it is. Kicked in. Just took a while. That's okay. Uh, and we can see the massive bezels that are just going on here. The screen looks like it's probably 540p. Doesn't look like a 7 inch display, I can tell you that. Maybe if it's measured from here to here, it's probably 7 inch, but there you go. Update preferred SIM card. Yep. And there we go. There it is there. So as I said, we've got 5G full strength just there. My OnePlus 9 Pro couldn't even pick up 5G here, so good on you, welcome device. We'll see in settings that it'll have 3G on here. But having a look at the main screen, the wallpaper looks pretty nice. Uh, we've got settings, music, gallery, contacts, phone messages, browser, and camera. We've also got a little Google widget along there as well. Swiping down, click here for quick connect. Okay. Uh, yep, yep, yep. We've got Wi-Fi location, audio profiles, auto rotate, Bluetooth, data connection, airplay mode, do not disturb, flashlight, and hotspot. Flashlight, come on. We've got to see how bright this torch is. Brilliant. That's uh, that's super bright. It's going to be a single LED built into there. I can guarantee that. Swiping along, we have backup and, of course, calculator, calendar, clock, downloads, email, Facebook, face lock, file manager, flashlight, FM radio, Google, notebook, Play Store, search, SIM toolkit, sound record, Twitter, videos, voice search, WhatsApp, and YouTube. No TikTok. Thank God. Okay. Well, that's all looking pretty standard I guess let's hold there so we've got wallpaper is that stolen off the Xiaomi Mi 11 series I'd say so then we have oh look oh mountain oh 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 I can tell you that he has definitely cried himself a big river uh there oh okay that actually looks quite nice they actually don't look too bad on this device let me find the best one here something that's got real good detail in it that actually has the best detail in it it's not half bad but at the same time it's not the worst i've ever seen so it'll be definitely interesting to see the resolution of this display uh, we can add widgets if we want to i'm just trying to figure out what android version this is 
uh, and I can't tell at the moment. It looks like 6, I would say. I'm going to say Android 6. We have launcher settings here, which you can change it to... Oh, we've seen this on the S30 Ultra. Uh, we'll just choose random and let the phone lag to shithouse. That's fine. Uh, we See? Fun. Should we jump into settings then and have a look and see what's going on in here? What's it going to look like? Ooh, ooh, looks different. Okay, so in Connect, we've got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, SIM cards, data usage, and more. So we'll go to more. Cellular networks. Preferred network type is 5G. Okay, well, we're going to just choose a network operator, and we'll see what it comes up with, but I highly suggest it's going to be 3G. If it's 4G, I'll fall off my chair, as I always say. And that pretty much says it all there. I'm going to give it a call and see what it sounds like. What's the ringtone going to be? The flutey phone, I think it's called. This is the earpiece on the Xiaomi Y11 Ultra. Ultra. Uh, uh, sounds, sounds fairly, fairly loud. loud. I can tell, I can tell you that. You that. And the, and the microphone, microphone sounds, sounds a little, a little something like this. I can, I can hear it pretty, pretty clearly, clearly from, where from where I am, so, so there might, there be, a might be a little bit of an echo as well. As well. So there we go, 3G. Sadly, this isn't the first 4G welcome device. That's unfortunate. I will connect to Wi-Fi later on, but we'll keep having a look through here. In sounds, all the usual, but in sound enhancement, best order and best loudness and best surround. The three greatest things to ever grace welcome phones. There you go. Display, mirror vision, multi-window mode, brightness level, wallpaper, we've gone through the wallpapers, icon size, that's okay. That was fun. <laughs> Just go to click on icon size and the setting stops working. Yep, that's good. Uh, there we go. We'll try that again just to see if it was maybe just a small glitch. No, no, it just doesn't work at all. That's fine. Smart Awakening. These sometimes work for me and sometimes don't work for me. So I'm going to just draw C to start camera. Here we go. No, maybe the phone has to be on like that. Oh, there you go. You've got to have the screen completely off for it to work. Oh dear, that camera app's looking really good. I have high hopes for this device already. Very, very high hopes. Uh, wallpaper, which we've already seen, is just telling you all of these. I will dump the system files off this. I will make sure to do that. As I've done with the past five or six Welcome devices, I'll do the ADB system pull, pull all the stuff off of this, and post it onto Mega for you to all have a look at and see if there's anything good in there. We've got equipment maintenance just here. Battery, 83%. It's just going to die in a couple of hours that's fine storage and usb 512 gigabytes of course yep we'll test that memory uh 16 gigabytes what do you reckon folks one gig two gig three gig maybe we'll see what happens we have the application list just here which i will go show system and i'm going to just scroll through here and we are going to see the system ui to tell us what version of android we're running but if you see anything in here please let me know what dodginess lies within applications just here. We know it's MediaTek, it said it right there. Face lock, fingerprint, yep. The fingerprint enrollment manager, yep. All good. Location, EM2. Oh, I didn't say launcher 3. Oh, Phoenix. That's malware, I think. I'm fairly sure of it. Uh, sound recorder system UI, Marshmallow. Yep, I was correct. Android 6. Okay. Uh, yep, high hopes for this device. Completely high hopes. All right, security, lock screen, and iris. We can do... Fingerprint is not here. Where did it go? Okay. Uh, face lock. Take a photo of my face, and pretty much that's it, I guess. We'll just do one, two, three, four. As I said, pull a silly face when you do this, because if it gets sold onto the dark web, they'll see a silly face. Allow trusted face to take pictures and record video. Yep, absolutely allow. 100%. Oh, God, here we go. Show your face. This is, yeah, this is legit. This is fine. Okay, pulling a really stupid face. I'll just see if this works. Yep, there we go. <laughs> you don't want to see what face I pulled during that, uh, but it works. So let's try and, f oh, fingerprint's coming up. Okay, but where's the iris? It says something about iris. Well, go on, where is it? I'll put unknown sources on while I'm here. Nothing else within here that looks noteworthy. Accounts, I'll add a Gmail later on. Fingerprint. I really don't have to say anything for this part, do I? I just... Ah, 
I just, I don't have to say anything at this point in time. Backup and reset, accessibility, all the usual stuff within accessibility. Enable quick boot, we should do that just to see what happens. Uh, general management, language and input, date and time, that is it. And about phone, here we go. Within status, we have our lovely serial number as per usual, 01234567898 ABCDF. All good in that regards. And the IMEI information is just there. Feel free to look that up and see what phone that corresponds to. Let me know down in the comments. It's always interesting to see where these are pulled from. But it's the My11 Ultra, MT6893 deck core, 16 gig of RAM, 512 gig of internal storage, Android 11, March 1st, 2021 is the security patch. But we'll see in here if we can see anything that might allude to what the real specifications are. And I don't see anything there, but let's try the Android version. Oh, they've put Android 11 on here. The Android 11 Easter egg. You cheeky bastards. There we go. At least they implemented half of it. Hang on a second. We don't have updates. There's no updates in here. I've just turned on developer options uh, just to have a bit of a quick scroll through here to see if there's anything. There's usually nothing really that I want to... Oh, the window animation scale. I'll do that to make the phone feel slightly like it's got maybe two gigs of RAM. Maybe. We'll see. Okay. Well, um, I'm going to connect it to Wi-Fi and I'll have a look and see if there's any updates that we can do. Oh, get ready, everyone. Oh, that speaker sounds tinny as. Only 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi as well. Nothing new on the block here. Okay, so I'm connected to Wi-Fi, but nope, no updates. It's usually fun to check the updates just to tell us that we don't have any updates, but nope, that's it. Well, we've went through settings, and honestly, there's not a lot going on with this phone, actually. I just want to check something. I just thought maybe the sticker may have changed to something else. High hopes for this device, as I've said a million times. Before I chuck a random Gmail account on this phone, I'm just going to go ahead and open up the camera, which we've already seen. I want to do the camera test first to show the amazing power of these cameras that are on this device. Uh, we have beauty mode, flash. We can rotate it to the front like so. Does it have autofocus? It doesn't have autofocus. This is an autofocus. Oh no, this does have autofocus. Holy moly. Wow. That's extremely uh, rare for welcome phones, by the way. Uh, EIS, we will probably have that on. Audio mode and video quality can be fine. All good. Uh, can we zoom? We can zoom. Aircon zoom is coming up. Well, let me go ahead and take some photos with the Xiaomi My... <laughs> oh, I can't say that with a straight face. The Xiaomi My 11 Ultra. And we'll go over the photos and videos taken with this and continue testing this $225 Australian device off Wish. Okay, testing the rear camera quality of the Xiaomi My 11 Ultra. This is with EIS on, and I do believe that this is, yep, this does have EIS. That is quite amazing. Do we have autofocus? We do, I guess. Yep, there we go. We do have autofocus. So we can see the froggos in a much nicer detail than previous welcome phones. I mean, it's not much of improvement, but... Hey, it's uh, better than nothing. Just have a look at the flowers here. There we go. That doesn't look too bad. Well, it's probably what, 720p maybe, 480p? Who knows? So I featured these in my OnePlus 9 Pro video. Uh, we need to give names to these three bastards here. So we've got Santa, Bootleg Mickey Mouse, and uh, Stuart number two. So uh, up to you what you want to call these folks. But if you want to see them in future video tests, uh, let me know. and. I'm happy to include them. I might put him next to Stuart, bootleg Mickey Mouse, which someone named him in the comments of the OnePlus 9 Pro video, but I can't remember what it was, but it was funny. Yeah, that's actually fairly stabilized. I need a gardener. Cheap. Anyone know one? Because, uh, this needs to go. 
Also, lemon tree is just completely overgrown at the moment. But there's lemons, which is good. Brick wall in all the detail there. There you go. And if we just sort of pan down to Stuart, he's just chilling. Never changes. Always got a smile on his face, no matter the circumstances. It's still a miracle how these are still hanging on for dear life. Amazing. Finally, the faraway aircon. Here we go. Four times digital zoom, I think. Yep, four times right there. Yeah, can't see Breeze Air, can't see Panasonic. So, that's pretty much that. Okay, the front camera of the Xiaomi My 11 Ultra looks a little something like this. This is with EIS on. Mm, it's actually, yeah, I'd say that's pretty much good. We don't have any autofocus, nothing like that. There's some sort of EIS going on there. You can see it working. Not too bad. Not the worst I've seen. That's a very loud plane. Piss off plane. I'll just stand here. Poor Ripley. Always wonders why I go outside and do a whole bunch of photos and videos with random welcome devices. She's wondering what the hell is going on. Well, there you go, Ripley. You know what's going on. What? This is with uh, flash on. Doesn't make a difference, does it? There you go. Oh, poor Ripley. Poor Ripley. Flop. Oh, hello there. I uh, had to replace my mouse map because I sliced through it uh, in the unboxing of this phone. This phone is cursed. I've sliced my finger open, my poor mouse mat, so luckily I had another one spared just in case something happened to the other one. But anyways, you've just seen the photos and videos that were taken with this. But before we talk about them, I just want to splice in a little bit of footage just here for you all. So I've just copied the photos and videos that I've taken with the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra, and the internal storage says 16 gigabytes, but my SanDisk SD card, which is 16 gigabytes, says 5 or 12 gigabytes. So they've kind of fucked up here and put the external storage as 512 gig instead of the internal storage. So I have a feeling that we know what the internal storage is going to be at this point in time. It's going to be 16 gigabytes. But anyways, let's continue on and see what else we can find out about this device. So at this point in time, it looks like it's 16 gigs of internal storage. I've also downloaded games off the App Store. Call of Duty didn't come up. Geekbench didn't come up. Ark Survival Evolved didn't come up. So we're dealing with less than 2 gigs of RAM here. So I think we already know the specifications without having to open up any of the applications to check. I think we already get a rough idea. But anyways, let's continue on. The photos and videos, all I can say is it's not the worst I've seen, not the best I've seen. I'll feature these from now on. I think this is a good little lineup here. You know, Santa and bootleg Mickey and there, there you go. We do have autofocus on the rear camera. The flash that's on the back of this doesn't really do anything at all. While we did get 1080p on the rear camera, we got 480p on the front camera, which is always to be expected on welcome devices. Well, the newer ones anyways. But on a uh, welcome device scale of 1 to 10 of camera quality, this is about a 5. It's not the best, but it will do. Certainly not 64 megapixels like it claims that it is. It's only 8 megapixels according to the resolutions that have come up with the test photos. But while downloading the apps off the Play Store, this started to get really sluggish. This started to get really slow. Uh, some of the Play Store just crashed unexpectedly. It's just not really the fastest on the block. When I first pulled it out of the box, it wasn't half bad. But now that I've started installing stuff, that's it. It's sort of become pretty slow. And this whole animation thing that I've put on doesn't really help either. But it's, uh, it's still working. So we're going to continue on with this, even though at this point in time, we pretty much know that it's Marshmallow, 16 gigs of storage, and under 2 gigabytes of RAM that's on this thing. But I'm going to go ahead and go through the applications, let's open up each one, see if it's the same usual stuff that's on welcome devices, settings we've been through, uh, music, we can do the speaker test now, we may as well get it over and done with. So whatever was on Ian's settings for the best loudness and stuff, uh, that's all on, but the equalizer stuff is all at default. So we'll go ahead and play BFD Division on our Schlaumi my 11 ultra i'm never gonna get tired of saying that <laughs> the just the name is just so yeah how much one letter can change a word it's amazing <laughs> i 
102.6 we got too. Definitely a bit loud, but it sounds pretty horrible. There's like this crackling that's going on inside of it. It's uh, sounding a bit... Not the best. But for a welcome device, what can you expect, honestly? I can confirm the Google widget works. So that's good. Gallery is just going to be gallery, contacts is contacts, phone, messages, the actual browser we can open. And once again, it signed my Gmail into this browser for some unknown reason. Let's have a look at the actual website for the My 11 Ultra on the Schlaumi My 11 Ultra. Well, there you go. That's what it's supposed to look like. Looks kind of the same. Not really. You can browse on this phone. Oh, let's have a look at the advertisements to see if any of it's stolen. Um, like they've showed in the, uh, in the listing for this. Uh, there, yep, yep, they did. They did. Yep, there it is there, three-phase cooling technology. There you go. We've just debunked everything, so they've just stolen all the advertisements of the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra. That is definitely false advertising there, because not only is it saying Xiaomi to make people think that it's Xiaomi, but all the advertising is like the actual Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra. Uh, that's just unbelievable. Anyways, uh, camera we've been through, backup and... I know it's backup and resaw, but, you know, it's just funny to say backup and. Uh, allow, 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 allow everything. There you go. That's what it looks like. Calculator looks like a calculator. Calendar looks like... You've got to allow for the calendar to work. There you go. Calendar looks like that. Clock looks like that. Nothing new here. Nothing in downloads. Email, Facebook, face lock. Well, we've already done face lock. We don't have to do that again. The file manager is just the usual file manager. Flashlight has a dedicated one there, but... Yeah, that's all it does. Actually, it looks like there's two LEDs in there. Still, it's not that bright at all. We'll see when we get to the teardown. FM radio. Okay, we've got to plug in some headphones. What's on Australian radio at 7.56pm on a Tuesday night? It's quite loud, but at least it has FM radio, which is quite nice. And yes, the 3.5mm headphone jack does work perfectly fine. No problems with that. Google is just going to open up Google. Notebook is a notebook. We can add a note. Hi. Done. I'll remember that. Exciting, isn't it? Play Store, I can show you that Geekbench and all that sort of stuff doesn't come up. Uh, yeah, I tried to look for Geekbench and doesn't come up with anything. So then I go Call of Duty, like so, and Raid Shadow Legends. Ugh. Uh, nothing. So yeah, that's a pretty good indication there that it's under two gigabytes of RAM. I could probably manually install it, but it's likely not going to run. We'll end up with the purple or pink screen or whatever it is. No point in doing that. Uh, search is just, is this search on the phone or a search is in browser search? It's searching for the phone. So if we go settings, it comes up. This is the first time I've ever seen this implemented on a welcome device. That's innovation for sure. Okay. SIM toolkit is not ready or unsupported, even though I do have a SIM card in it. That's okay. No worries. Continuing on. Sound recorder looks like the usual sound recorder. Nothing new here. Twitter's going to want me to sign in. Videos is just going to show what videos I've taken with this. Uh, voice search. Let's try this. Open Google. Play BFG Division. Play... BFG Division, you can do it. Hello, welcome device. Oh, hello. Uh, play BFG Division. Holy shit, it actually worked. Playing music. Well, it didn't play BFG Division, it did open up YouTube for us, so I guess we may as well go ahead and try the YouTube test. Okay, quality-wise, we could do 4K 60fps. Wanna watch a welcome device struggle? Be prepared, here we go. Wait for it to kick in. Wait for it to kick in. Looks pretty nice at the moment, but I don't think it's kicked in yet. Oh, there we go. 4K 60fps right there. Okay, let's be fair to Schlaumi here and put it down to 720p 60fps. We'll start that again, and we'll see how this goes. Oh, 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 just kick in. Okay, it's still laggy. I was kind of hoping maybe 60fps 720p would work. Okay, fine, we'll try it in 480p then, go on. Also, the phone's getting really warm at that camera bump area. Uh, but 480p is 
looking good. Yep, I have a feeling I know what's going on with this. There you go. Look, the display's not the worst I've seen. So far, it's a very meh device. The screen does do colours reasonable, I guess. It's just... It's a very meh welcome device. There's nothing special going on here. It really would have been awesome to see an actual secondary display on the back, but I think my expectations were just a little bit too high. But anywho... Well, we have our limited lineup of games, GTA 3, Minecraft, and Crazy Taxi. Guess we'll go ahead and open up Minecraft and see how it runs on this. I don't think it'll run very well, but I'll just leave it load. We'll see what happens. Okay, well this is promising. Looks good. While this loads, it is starting to get pretty warm around just here, the edges and the back. It's pretty warm, so I reckon we've got an MT-658 in here. I don't reckon it's anything else. Going from testing the Snapdragon 888 on the OnePlus 9 Pro to then going back to an MT-6580, well, under the assumption that it's an MT-6580, oh boy, that's a big difference. There we go. Oh, 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 okay. Uh, oh, oh, no, no, never mind. Had my hopes up just a little bit too much just there, and there you go. That took a long, long time to load, but, uh, here we go. Broke my ankles again, as per usual. Uh, it runs at, like, 10 FPS. I mean, if you look at the sky, it's pretty smooth. If you look at the ground, it's pretty smooth, but anywhere else, that's pretty laggy. So let's try Crazy Taxi and hope that that runs slightly better. God, at this point in time, GTA 3 is probably not going to run that well at all, but, hey, you never know, man. You never know. Jesus. Sega. Forgot I had the volume up at 100. Poof. Oh, I'm uh, 76 today. All right, let's go. Ooh. Oh, God, the speaker. Uh, well, this runs pretty good. Oof, it's warming up at the back. But the speaker, though. Now can you sort of hear the crackling that's going on? I'm not going to point that directly at the microphone because that would probably hurt anyone that's listening with earphones. Crazy Taxi works. Oh god, this speaker. It's bad. We're just going to just pull it out and destroy it, I think. Uh, GTA 3, go on. Draw distance, up high, resolution, high, visual effects, maximum, dynamic shadows, on, frame limiter, off. And there we go, let's try this. Oh boy, watch the frame rate dip. Oh, okay. Well, it looks better than expected. Banshee. Okay. We oui, let's go. Okay, it doesn't actually run half bad. Yeah, this is playable. Oh, there's input lag. <laughs> there's a there's a bit of input lag going on there. And I've just failed straight away. Otherwise, I mean, it doesn't look too bad. I don't have any good words for this at the moment. Like, GTA 3 runs, it works. But I wouldn't exactly want to pay $225 to just be able to play GTA 3 running like this with the speaker. Just... Oh, it sounds god-awful. I think BFG Division killed the speaker. Or made it worse. I'm not too sure. But... Yeah, input lag here. I just ran over someone. That's okay. Gaming test. Uh, let's just say you can play some games on this if you wanted to. Definitely uh, 16 gigs of RAM, that's for sure. Definitely a deck of core processor, that's for sure. Yeah, right, okay. At this point in time, we've tested everything, I think. I really want to see the specs, and I want to tear this thing apart. But first, we've got to test that micro SD card. We've got to see if it's a 128 gig one, or if it's not a 128 gig one. I've already filmed the segment, so I know the outcome. Also enjoy a bonus review, because I bought something extra from Wish, and that was included in the parcel. So enjoy this little bonus review, and having a look at that micro SD card. All right, so now the bonus portion of the video, where we're gonna go ahead and test the 128 gig micro SD card that was the free gift with this. I'm gonna go ahead and set up a laptop and we'll just run H2 Test W to see what it comes up with. But first, I wanna show you something I bought off Wish while on my live stream. Now, as you should all know by now, I really love miniature stuff. If there's a miniature item of a real life item, 
I just really, really like it. And uh, I found this, which is currently $1.92 from Wish, and it has free shipping. My one, however, was $2.86 with free shipping. But I've purchased the world's smallest playing cards that are meant to be used in a dollhouse, but uh, I just want to see... <laughs> Just how small they are. Just the whole premise of a tiny little deck of playing cards. It just sounds cool. Anyways, let's go ahead and open this up. Uh, I don't even know where they are, if they're going to be spread out in here or not. So I'm going to just be extra careful not to damage anything. Oh, there we go. Okay. You've got to make it? What? You've got to build it? Oh, okay. No one told me we were going to be building it. But that is cool though, you can see all the cards just there, unfortunately it got a little bit bent there, but they're just the joker cards, so we can ignore them, but majority of them are pretty flat, so go ahead and take this out, there we go, oh look how cute the boxes are, <laughs> bridge power whist, what, okay, yeah fair enough, what does it also sound there? It's not welcome, it's welcome. <laughs> oh fuck, what have I put myself into? Okay, well we got the two little boxes there. Uh, I'm gonna pop out each of these cards. Okay, there they all are there. Now it's like 52 card pickup. There you go. Uh, <laughs> they're extremely cool, I can tell you that. But imagine just walking up to someone in the street and going, can I show you a magic trick, like, you know, David Blaine or something like that, and then whipping out a box of cards this small and be like, pick a card, any card, and then go, look, I can make it disappear. Magic. So that's a full suit of cards just there. I have a feeling that the reason why they give you two boxes is because they're all not going to fit in one box. You're going to have to put them in two separate boxes. One for black, one for red, makes sense. So it turns out that it doesn't fit two, it will only fit just one suit of cards. Okay, there we go. Oh, it's the wrong way. There we go, right there. What do I have to compare it to? Oh, a micro SD card. Here you go. That's the size of a micro SD card and the tiny little playing cards just there. Well, that was fun. Uh, you can only put one suit of cards in the box, but I think that's sort of the whole point of it. Quite a little fun novelty. Definitely worth the $2.86 that I paid for it. But anyways, let's test this memory card and see what the real capacity is. All right, here's the 128 gig micro SD card. I'm going to go ahead and chuck it in this spare laptop. We're going to open Chip Genius first because that will show us the storage size without having to go through the testing of H2 DSW. So I'm just going to put the SD card into the computer. There we go. So there we go, it comes up as 120 gig. Anything on it? Nope, nothing. All right, let's open Chip Genius. So Chip Genius didn't come up with anything, so I'm just gonna run H2TestW instead, and we'll just leave this go. Place your bets, everyone. Eight gig, 16 gig, 32 gig. Let's find out. This may take a while. And the results are in. This 128 gig micro SD card is actually a 32 gigabyte one, which is more than I thought, actually. I didn't think it'd be more than eight gig, but it's 32 gigabytes. But I still wouldn't trust this. I wouldn't trust any data on it because you just never know. If it's already been toyed around with to make it seem like it's a 128 gig, when in reality it's a 32 gigabyte one, I just really wouldn't place any bets on this lasting more than a couple of months. But hey, you never know. But at least we've tried it, so let's move on. So there you go. 32 gigabytes. It is what it is. It was a free gift. As I said, this is more useful to be fairly honest. Even though I don't use one of these things on my actual phone, uh, it's good to have one. We'll just put that with that and put that there. But yeah, little mini playing cards. How cool are they? So I've got them all in here now because uh, I don't know where else to put them without losing them or leaving these about where Ripley can eat them because uh, Ripley's got this thing with eating paper at the moment, which is kind of annoying, but uh, there you go. Unfortunately, it's always too good to be true with these welcome devices. So now let's go ahead and look at the specs because I really want to see what's running in this. So let's start with Antutu. Okay, let's not start with Antutu then. Maybe I'll open it again just in case. Okay, we won't be trying Antutu then. So I don't know the multi-touch then. Uh, we'll open CPU-Z or CPU-Z. Doesn't matter what it is. Is this actually going to open or is it going to crash? Oh, no. It, well, there you go. Oof. There's the deck of core 
MediaTek MT6893 there with Mali 400 MP. Yep, looking good. Okay, the manufacturer is Lehman. <laughs> In the access data for the photos, it does come up as saying that it is a Lehman Android on display here for you all. So there you go. MT6893, 7 inches, 1440p, 16 gig of RAM, all fake specs here. Android version, 11. No, that's not the case. We don't have root access. No battery info. Thermal, 40 degrees. Yeah, well, it's cooled down a little bit since I was playing games. And in sensors, that's all we've got. But I can't run an antivirus test on this. I can't run Geekbench or anything. Plus, running Geekbench on this phone would probably shatter it to pieces because as this phone has demonstrated, it's just not made for anything past opening up an application and that's about it. We'll try device info hardware. Oh, there you go. Fake 11. I'm glad it says it right there. Good on your device info hardware. But otherwise, it still comes up with the fake MT6893. Uh, 16 gigs of RAM. There's the flash module there. R821 MB, which was on the previous Galaxy S30 Ultra or whatever it was called. So I can't remember what that corresponded with. But it's definitely not 512 gig and we don't have 16 gigs of RAM. But anyways, sorry, just before I did see 540 by 1200. That would be the resolution of the display, I think. But system, says it all here, the Lehman My 11 Ultra. I wonder what Lehman means, if it means anything in Chinese. All that just there. 1200 by 540 is exactly what it is. We have a refresh rate of 68.8 hertz. Uh, memory, 16, 512, no, that's not correct. Cameras, oh god, okay, this is new. 64 megapixel, 32 meg, no, not the case here. 7200 milliamp hour battery, nope, not the case. Thermal, not the case, okay. Go on, CPU system info. This is an old app, but usually shows everything we need to know. And... Is it gonna, yep, there we go. MT6580. Android version is 11, but then the version name's M, so we know it's Marshmallow. But anyways, MT6580. Of course. Internal memory, 16 gigabytes. There you go. So it was correct when I was pulling the photos off this. 16 gig is the internal memory. But the RAM is... It is 2 gig. Why doesn't Call of Duty and all that sort of stuff come up? Maybe because it's on an older version of Android. That's probably why it's not coming up on the Play Store. We've had devices that have had 1 gig. And then again, we've had devices that have had 512 meg of RAM, which I never ever want to use again, like the X27 XLs thing. I have another one, as I've mentioned months ago, that I really wanted to set on fire and I haven't done it yet. I'll get around to it one day. Yes, yeah, screen size 5.2 inches. Not the case. It's probably about 6.2, 6.3 inches, something like that. All the rest of the information just there. Battery, yes. Health, good. Level, 63. Power source, none. Uh, capacity, 100 milliamp hours. We'll see, it's probably going to be, what, 2,000, 2,500, if that. 25 degrees for CPU and battery. And the sensors, that's all we've got. Cameras, 8 megapixel back. And the front is 5 megapixels, which all seems to add up correctly. But otherwise, folks, we know the specs of this. MT6580, 3G, 2 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs internal storage, Android 6. Very shitty battery because it's dropping very fast. A 540p display, which isn't half bad, but as I've said during the review, this is just a very meh welcome device. It brings nothing new to the table whatsoever. It's got a fucking terrible speaker in it. The big bezel sizes, the... This... I honestly can't say much more than it's just very meh. It would have been nice to see 4G or something like that on here, considering the price was $225 Australian, but nope. Sadly, still the same scam. 3G, pretty shit specs. What else can you do? But anyways, that's all I've got to say about this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and do a factory reset, pull the system files off this, and we're going to pull this sucker apart and see what's inside of it. Well, with the device back to its factory state, I went ahead and pulled all the system files off it. It came to 1.4 gigabytes, and there was a lot that it pulled off it. So uh, go through that. Feel free to tell me what you find. Hope you find some goodies in there. I think I've pretty much looked over everything I need to about this device. Checked all the specs, checked all the apps. We've tested gaming on it. I think it's ready to tear it apart. So I'll go ahead and power it off. Let's see what's inside of this thing. Oh yeah, look for Boot Audio 3 in the uh, system files too. So my Pry Tool, the uh, things here, they came off, so I just put duct tape on it instead. It works fine. Mad hacks. That's for sure. Alright, so I'll take that off. I mean, the back doesn't look too bad, but I have a feeling it's going to just crack along here for some reason. Because of this huge-ass camera bump. Using no heat whatsoever, I'll just go ahead and... Put a pry tool, just like so, and go ahead and just not give a shit whatsoever. And now we just get a bit of cardstock, and go ahead and slice it open like so. Maybe I should actually care, because I did kind of slice my finger open during the unboxing of this, so uh, I'll be a bit careful. Okay. 
Oh, I kind of killed one of the uh, antenna bands. I can see stuff on the battery. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Ta-da! So I pulled the signal antenna bits off there. That's fine. Glass. And there was one there as well. I broke that. But the battery... I knew I could feel a gap. Yeah, there you go. Uh, does this just come off like so? Okay. Oh, shh. Okay. Uh, the phone just yeeted itself out of existence. That's fine. Well, there you go. That's the uh, secondary display and the periscope camera and the... Here we go. Her at the the made a track. Hang on a second. Where's there's no screws. What? <laughs> okay. Uh let's lift up the battery. Nope, there's no codes on it. Only what we see here. If someone wants to try look up the battery code using any of this information, feel free. I don't know why it says 128 and 16 though. 128 megabits maybe and 16 gig. I'm not too sure. Ah, we have two LED flashes. There you go. I was only just expecting just one because it wasn't that bright at all, but uh, there you go. There's no screws. So how does one take this? Oh, does it just come apart like this? Is this the first welcome device that has implemented a screwless design? And it surely has. You've got to be kidding me. No. No. There's no screws that hold the frame down whatsoever. No, this can't be... Yep, that's real. It's true. Um, great repairability, though. I can tell you that. Well, there's the motherboard there. Look at this, though. What is this going on here? This all looks fairly new. They've used a new frame for once, which is, uh, that's exciting, I guess. We'll have a look at the sticker just there, which does say 2 plus 16, can confirm it, just says it right there. I think it's a different looking motherboard, because this is a different looking frame. This is not the usual frame that we're used to. This one's a matte black frame. Anyways, let's go ahead and pull out this speaker, because this was the cause of all problems. So there's the bottom PCB with the Type-C USB port, the microphone, vibration motor, all on there. And there's our speaker just there. Our tinny box speaker. No waterproof mesh, no nothing on there. Just pretty bog standard. Nothing new to see here. Yeah, the only screws that need to be removed for this whole thing is the bottom charger port and the motherboard. That's it. They're getting lazier. Not only are they just using the same specs, they're getting lazier. They don't even want to put screws into this thing now. The reason why there's a new frame is because of the phase induction cooling that they said that this has. That they totally didn't steal from Xiaomi whatsoever. No, of course not. Yep, makes sense now. And there we go. That's the guts there. They've decided to put sticky tape on the flex ribbon for the display. But there you go, there's the frame just there. It is technically the same frame that we've seen before, with the same cutouts and stuff, but they've just used a black frame instead of a silver-looking frame. They've made some slight changes. Amazing. On the back, nothing much going on there. We do have a code just there, which says 2 plus 16, just there. Headphone jack, speaker, our front camera, which we'll have a look at the cameras quickly. There's the front camera just there. Don't know if you can see the code just there, but I will try and Google that and see if there's anything that comes up for this. Usually there's nothing really interesting that comes up for this, but hey, you never know. And the rear camera has those codes just there, and no optical image stabilization. Nothing whatsoever. It does have EIS though, so that's kind of good, I guess. So looking at the rest of the motherboard, it's pretty standard. No unused connectors. So this board may be slightly different to the ones that we've seen on the previous Vulcan devices. This may be a revised motherboard. But now I guess I've got to make that sacrifice and go ahead and pull the shielding off and see what's under here. It's sort of tradition now, I have to do this. Some devices I won't pull the shielding off, but for the majority of them I will. But this one hopefully should live on. Okay, very difficult to see, but there is the MT6580, and we have a Samsung flash module just there, which I'll Google this and see what that comes up with, but I would say that would be a 16 gigabyte one. See, look what I ripped off the motherboard. It'll be fine, it'll work, it's fine. And there's a little chip just there, which is a MediaTek one as well, there you go. So I'll include that in the spec sheet. That is the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra Teardown.
pretty much run of the mill, except they've made it screwless now. Well, apart from the seven odd screws that I did pull out of this thing, can the display just come off very easily? Yeah, I was going to pull the display off, but it's actually pretty tightly sealed, and I'll keep the display working because you just never know. There's the codes just there, if anyone wants to look them up. But otherwise, I think that's it for the teardown, so I'm going to go ahead and put this back together, see if it works, and uh, give you the spec list, and call this one a video. Okay, well it's back together for the most part. I'm going to go ahead and switch it on and see if it still works. Oh no, I think it's dead. I'll just plug the charger in it to see if it does anything, but I have a feeling it's dead. Okay, never mind then. So why isn't it switching on? I just wasn't holding the power button properly. It still works. Oh, I thought I killed it. It lives on. Yay. So we just get the frame and just put it back on there like so. Just click it all back down into place like this. Don't give a fuck whatsoever. There we go. Just snappity snap snap snap. Just plonk you back on there like so. Plonk you back on there somehow. There we go. If you want to learn the specifications of the Schlaumi My 11 Ultra, you might want to pause the video here to learn all about the specifications that were inside of this device. And I'm pretty sure everything's pretty much correct, except for the battery. I can't find anything about the battery, uh, but that's pretty much all the information listed there about this $225 Australian Xiaomi My 11 Ultra clone called the Schlaumi My 11 Ultra. That's made by a company called Lehman, that's a welcome branded for, that's just too much information to process there. Otherwise, this is a very standard, run-of-the-mill welcome device. It brought nothing new to the table, as I've said. I don't know, I was kind of hoping something would be, you know, really cool with this, something would be new with this, but it's just the same thing. However, if you do want me to keep continuing buying welcome devices and seeing how they are, well then I'm more than happy to do it because I buy these devices so you do not have to. I want to make sure that people stay away from pretty much all of the technology on Wish because it's all just like this. False advertising, misleading, all that sort of thing. I do this so you don't have to. I take the hit so you don't have to. So hopefully if you've come across this video and you're looking at this on Wish and going, oh, this looks really good and you've decided to Google it and you found this review, hopefully you know now to stay away from this. All of the system applications that I do use to test the specifications on this device are listed in the description as well. So if you do own a device and you're not too sure of the specifications or so, use those apps to see what the specs are. Or if you want to, feel free to tear your phone apart if you want to avoid the warranty and stuff to see what's going on. But it's always good to have one of those applications to check the specifications of your device mostly the device info hardware and the other one which I can't remember the name of, I can never remember the name of, but it is all linked in the description for you all. But feel free to test that out on your own device and see what you find. Anyways folks, that is gonna do it for the just shush. <laughs> Xiaomi My 11 Ultra clone. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed the return to I wish with me actually buying stuff off Wish and instead not finding them at cash converters. This actually did come from Wish and the last time I bought something from Wish was last year sometimes. So yeah, I hope you all enjoyed that for what it was. I think I covered everything I did within this video. If not, please let me know. And because it's still alive, if there's any questions, feel free to let me know. But otherwise, the system files are in the description as well. Feel free to go through them and tell me what you find. And I think that's pretty much it. I think that's all that I need to talk about with this phone. The video's gone on far too long as per usual because I went in depth and checked every little detail about this phone, but I think we're finally done with this. So I thank you all so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. And if you haven't watched the whole thing and you've skipped through, then that's absolutely fine. No problems whatsoever. That's why the chapters or timestamps are there for if you want to skip through. But if you're in the premiere, hello to everyone in the premiere. I hope you did enjoy this one for what it is. But once again, everyone, thank you so much for watching another installment in the iWish series. I hope you all enjoyed this one. And as always, take care, stay safe, please be good people, and I'll see you all in the next video, which is another I wish one, so be prepared. Take care everyone, I'll see you in the next one. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.